this demo of Cloudflare Zero Trust, we'll showcase the major functionalities covered by our Secure Web Gateway service from both an end user and administrator perspective. Cloudflare Secure Web Gateway runs in each of its data centers, operating between the users and the rest of the internet. Users have their traffic inspected and filtered by first sending it to Cloudflare's Edge via one of its on-ramps. And like all Secure Web Gateways, Cloudflare is designed to protect employees' web traffic and prevent unauthorized behavior. The most common way to do this is by using the device client, Cloudflare Warp, but other clientless methods exist, like enabling proxy locations and proxy endpoints. For this demo, we'll use the device client, but keep in mind that there are flexible deployment options for users that can't have their device managed. Here, I'm trying to access poker.com, but all I'm getting is a block page. Content filtering is a common corporate use case, and it's being enforced by this policy at the top here. Cloudflare sees user traffic matching content categories like gambling or security risks will block the request at the DNS level. Our expression-based builder lets us be granular about who this policy applies to, so we can potentially exclude people like contractors or IT administrators. Down here in Actions, we can see choices like Allow and Block, but also Override and Safe Search. Override means when Cloudflare resolves a request to a specific domain or application, it can instead return a different result that you define here. Safe search means that all of the search engine queries matching specific criteria will instead have their results sanitized. And we can see from this policy at the bottom that we're enforcing safe search not just for remote users, but also for every DNS location that we've configured. While Cloudflare has an extremely powerful public DNS, we recognize that organizations might have internal resources that they don't want public DNS to be able to resolve. So in this regard, users can set local domain fallbacks where they can instruct Cloudflare Zero Trust to ignore a request to certain domains and instead let internal DNS resolvers handle that. Next, let's take a look at HTTP policies. By nature, HTTP policies will be applied after DNS policies. And at the top, we even see a similar content filtering policy to the one in DNS. Inside the policy builder, however, we can see there's a larger number of categories and expressions available for HTTP traffic. That means these layer seven policies can filter based off of DLP profiles, upload and download file types, and even HTTP method and responses. For example, we could create a policy that applies to file sharing applications and stop any HTTP delete methods that gateway detects. Below, we can see another field as well, device posture. Cloudflare's device client is constantly polling the user's machine and getting a sense of what security elements are or are not in place while the client is active. And this information can be used as criteria for whether certain policies can execute. To build off of our previous example, if a user doesn't have CrowdStrike enabled or if they're logging in from a strange location, a layer seven policy can prevent them from deleting things from the corporate file share. At the HTTP level, Cloudflare Gateway becomes more granular and powerful. And to show that, let's look at three different policies, tenant control, DLP, and browser isolation. On the left, we have a policy that identifies any traffic that's going to Google Workspace or Gmail, and we've added an expression matching this rule to users identified as employees. The action here is allow, but we've added an HTTP header into this request. Now this header is part of something that Google provides, and we can explicitly define which email domains corporate users can access. On the right, we have Alice signing into her official corporate Gmail account so she can read her mail. But if we switch here to her personal Gmail account, Alice loves bees, she doesn't have access when she tries to log in. So this is a way for you to control employee access to specific tenants of downstream SaaS applications. And these custom headers are supported by many common SaaS applications in use in the workplace today. Let's take a look at a policy that involves securing sensitive data in motion through the lens of our policy builder. This policy here is using our data leak prevention or DLP profiles to identify financial information or things like social security numbers and tax identifiers in any content that goes through the user's browser. We're applying those DLP policies to sites hosted by the organization, but also to the corporate instance of Salesforce. So coming back to the end user experience, I'm gonna try and download customer data as an employee without the appropriate level of access. Now, when we click on this record and try to download it, we'll see that the download URL has been blocked. Download may also begin and fail due to a network error because at the network level, the Cloudflare policy is saying that I'm not authorized to download this content. 
And as you've seen from the expression builder, these policies could be applied to any domain or any kind of IP address that you're accessing through Cloudflare Gateway. Now what this means is we can use HTTP policies to not only enforce the use of appropriate SaaS applications, but we can also use it to protect sensitive data in our applications as well. And finally, we've reached the browser isolation policy. There are cases where you want to allow people to access websites, but those websites may inherently carry some form of risk to someone who visits them. So what we can do is something called remote browser isolation. We have a rule here that applies to any social media website and several streaming sites. And we're going to permit user access, but we're going to isolate their web session. What this means is the user's native browser will never interact with the site that's being isolated. Instead, Cloudflare is going to spin up a headless Chromium browser at its edge that browses the web page instead. And it will transmit that page content and user interactions back and forth between the user and the origin server. That means whatever happens during the web session, their native browser will remain untouched. You can continue to secure the web session with data protection controls that we can apply on top of the isolated browser. And that applies to things like stopping user interactions like printing and copy paste as a means of protecting sensitive information from untrusted or unauthorized interactions. So now let's take a quick look at Twitter. You'll notice from the end user's perspective, nothing seems to have changed. However, all of the content that you're seeing is actually being rendered remotely on a server and then delivered to my client using Skia draw commands from the Chromium browser, which is a very low latency, low impact way to transmit the web session content. If we right click on the desktop, we'll see the menus are slightly different. And I've pulled up a browser isolation toolbar, which gives me live metrics of how quickly the headless Chromium browser is communicating with my native device. Cloudflare's unique network vector rendering method allows it to be more performant than traditional methods of browser isolation, like pixel pushing and page scrubbing. And thanks to its single pass architecture and global edge network, it can deliver isolated browsers on the scale of what an enterprise needs. Now, if I try and copy some of this content, we can see Cloudflare inform us that it's prevented this action. I also can't print this page. And as we can see from the policy, I can't upload or download files either. Browser isolation is an incredibly powerful method to protect users from internet-borne threats. It can also protect sensitive data from authorized use and protect organizations from zero-day threats. It might be a link that someone's clicked in a phishing email or something someone has downloaded, but it renders remotely on the server's edge and it's torn down when the user closes the tab. Finally, Cloudflare Gateway can control traffic to L3 destinations, whether those networks are directly on-prem or hosted in cloud providers. This is a great solution for hybrid work as Cloudflare Gateway interoperates with other zero trust products and can proxy private IPs to remote users anywhere in the world. While this hasn't covered all of the features available within the platform, we've illustrated how Cloudflare Gateway can monitor and control user traffic, protect sensitive data within applications, and protect organizations against malware and zero day threats. Because the service is run across every Cloudflare data center, employees can enjoy accelerated internet access when their requests are no longer backhauled to centralized locations and their security policies can scale with one of the most powerful global networks in the world. Thanks for watching.